Inspector. Jack. Here for the usual. I'm here on business. This is you with your arm around a man named Owen Paxton. What's this about? He's been killed. I need to know what you know about it. How did it happen? I'm asking the questions. What was the nature of your relationship with Paxton? We were old friends from school. So you kept in touch? What are you implying? You knew about Paxton's tendencies. Tendencies? Of the unnatural sort. Considered it none of my business. Were you at his party last night? That kind of thing wasn't agreeable to me, Inspector. I didn't attend Owen's parties. Not agreeable with you? You're in a picture with him and his friends. I ran into them on the island. I was being polite. That's the truth of it. Honestly. Oh, very good. Well, that's Eckerman. Where were you last night, Mr. Walker? Truthfully. I was at home. You're missing a shoe, Mr. Walker. Close the shop, Jack. You're coming with us. You went to his house that night. Would you believe I lent my shoes to a friend? You lied about your relationship with Owen Paxton. And when you said you were at home on the night of the murder? I couldn't help you. I don't know who did it. It was easier to say I wasn't there. Mr. Paxton's neighbor has identified you, Mr. Walker. She said that you were a frequent visitor, at times an overnight guest. Should have known she'd be at her window at 5 AM. She also told me those visits ended abruptly, approximately six weeks ago. Good old Mrs. Emery. She's right about that, too. Did you and Mr. Paxton have a falling out? Nothing lasts forever, Inspector. What happened when you saw Mr. Paxton the night of the party? I didn't talk to him. You expect us to believe that you went to your former lover's party and it was all just jolly hockey sticks? Perhaps you didn't intend to argue, but it happened anyway. No, there was no argument. You didn't go up to his study with him? No. Your finger marks, these, are on the murder weapon. Caught in another lie. You were in... We were close. The breakup was... I was not happy. That wasn't Owen's fault. He's a good man. But we were different. He didn't care about discretion. At times, he even enjoyed poking at people like Mrs. Emery. But he had family money. I own my own business, and that's all I've got. My reputation is my bread and butter. Why did you go over there that night? I'd been drinking, I knew he was having a party. Felt sorry for myself all alone, I suppose. Why did you go up to the study? I wanted to settle things between us. How? Not by bashing him over the head. We haven't yet said how Mr. Paxton was killed. I know what happened because I found him. I saw blood on his head and on the statue. You've been lying to us from the start, and you're lying now. No, listen. I went over to him to check his pulse. He wasn't breathing. He was already dead. I sat with him for a minute, then I heard someone yell, police, and I ran. You had a falling out with a victim, and you admit that you were in his house at the time he was killed. So were a lot of other people. Owen's parties were popular. He made his home a safe place. For men like us. What do you know about Mr. Paxton's stamp collection? That it was a substitute for the children he would never have? Huh. It appears some of his rare stamps are missing. What if the killer was not one of the partygoers, but someone who wanted Mr. Paxton's stamps. You don't think he sold them? 
He did like the thrill of the trade. Well, we thought of that. It doesn't account for all of them. I know where he might have kept them. Where? I have an errand to run, detective. It needs to get done tonight. I don't have the authority to release you. I haven't heard a thing. Take me to Owens. I'll show you where the stamps are if you give me an hour alone afterward to run an errand. Let you out, you mean? I'll come back. I promise. Owen had a collection of things that weren't appropriate for a display. Doesn't seem like a very safe place to keep valuables. That's what I told him, but no fires in the summertime. Oh, so, um... Stamps. Have to get these to Constable Crabtree. I've kept my part of the deal, Detective Watts. What kind of errand is it you want to do? If I don't visit my mother on Monday evening, she'll worry. I don't like to upset her. If you don't come back, I will lose my job. You understand? I understand. Paxton sold forged stamps to his friends in the Philately Society. Giving any one of them motive for murder? They've been brought in to be questioned. How did you find Mr. Paxton's secret collection? Mm, Jack Walker knew where they were hidden. And he told you? No, he showed me. He did what? I released Walker for an hour in exchange for his cooperation locating the missing stamps. He's been held on suspicion of murder. He could be on a train halfway across the country by now. Could be, but in fact, he is in the cells. Seems you were wrong about this particular one. That makes you lucky, not smart. You disobeyed my orders, Detective. However he went about it, Detective Watts has found a promising avenue of investigation. The victim had been selling forgeries of very rare stamps. Forgeries good enough to fool the city's leading experts. And the man who made them is sitting in our interview room. What? Mr. Walker. I wanted to thank you for your help with the case. It was instrumental in catching Mr. Paxton's killer. I'm glad. Did you need something else from me? Um, do you... Mind if I call you Jack? I hope you come back again. If anyone were to find out... I know. Some things are worth the risk. Oh, have a lady friend, do you? Oh, 
Nothing to hide from me, detective. We're in the same boat. Oh. Oh my. Quite the excavation. Well, you'll be pleased to know, Effie, it's given us a break in your case. This is the wrapper in which Mr. Vickers' rent money was placed into the box. If we can find out who threw out the rest of this trash, we may have a lead. I managed to get a copy of the book cover. Oh, it's distinguished. A man alone will be in bookstores before we know it. Really? It's just, it's all happening so quickly, I thought I would have a chance to make a few changes. George, it's splendid. Don't worry. You're good at everything you set out to do. Everything you tell me to do, you mean? Yes, the important things. <laughs> That's from Jack Walker's butcher shop. He lives in the building. Uh, uh, yes, I remember him. He was a witness in our philately case, George. That's right. Well, let's go see what the butcher has to say for himself. Yes. Hmm. Yes. <clears throat> Mr. Walker, Detective Watts, Constable, how can I help you? This came from your shop, Mr. Walker? Yes, it did. It was found in a garbage bin from this building. Was that bag yours? No, it was chicken kidneys. I bring them home for Mr. Kerr. He feeds them to his cat. That means Mr. Kerr likely took the money himself. Thank you for your help, Mr. Walker. Not at all. Let's go have a word with the superintendent. Constable? Yes. Ah, detective. Uh, George, I want to talk to you. All right. You know that when you saw me the other morning, I wasn't visiting a lady friend. Uh, no explanation necessary. I lied to you because the truth is somewhat embarrassing. Sir, there's really no need. I had I money mean... troubles of late. Ah. Uh -huh. Yes, I was careless during my travels. I couldn't make my rent this week. And Mr. Walker was kind enough to let me stay with him. <clears throat> right, well, uh, money troubles happen to the best of us. Mm. Uh, but, detective, you should know that your money troubles are safe with me. Thank you, George. <clears throat> I usually only meet the creatures after their demise. Sorry, son. But if one was found... How much does the animal weigh? Uh, about 500 pounds, sir. 500 pounds? And you tried to take him on a streetcar? It's about 300 pounds of take-home meat. Uh, if it isn't being slaughtered at home, I'd try it down by the fort. You think he's dead? Uh, dead or on his way to it. But he's a prize winner. He'll be put up for auction. Probably fetch a good price. If you hear anything i'll let you know you know you're not the only one looking for an animal that size I got a call from your boss he's looking for a pig the whole police department's looking for him. i think he has other intentions some sort of uh new zealand pit oven a hongi it's been a while since i've attended one of those it's bloody hell feed the whole neighborhood with plenty to share could i at least say goodbye oh bloody hell you were gonna be a champion Take the winter fair by storm. It's a fair fit for a king, sir. There is rumor this winter fair could get royal assent. A royal winter fair? Mm. That'll be the bloody day. If you want to do the hungy right, use mutton. That's the proper meat. Oi, son. Get him out of here. You mean it, sir? Go on before I change my mind. You're a good man, Tom. Tell that to Margaret. I can explain. I have some questions regarding the death of Miss Keating and Patrick Langer. Their deaths? Whatever does he have to do with it? <laughs> I can explain! Call Station House 4. You're an investigative journalist. You certainly didn't investigate your fiance. Shut up. <laughs> A 
And that's the biggest one you could find. Mm. These are good. I knew you'd like them. And what will you do with Atley if he doesn't win the winter fair? Talk to Mr. Walker about butchering him. So you never gain an affection for the animals? Hey, it's a wallet with legs. Hmm. If I hurry, I can get him down to the park for the last round of judging. I'll escort you. Get out of the way! Thank you! find the animal? Uh, no. I think I'm on the pig side now. Oh, I can't explain. I detest the winters here. They're not so bad. You just need a warmer coat. No, no, no. It's not the cold. It's the dark. I prefer the dark. No one can see what you're getting up to. I'm starting to appreciate your logic. Come on. Llewellyn? Blood. Go. I'll handle this. What happened with the man in the alley? Detective Furdock took the case. Has the killer been found? Not yet. Anyone ask how you came across the body? I said I came across it on my own. It's not going to be pregnant. There's no need to worry. So long as we're discreet, no one will ever learn about us. People you work with already know about me. And they don't about me. We will endeavor to keep it that way. Detective! Uh, Detective Edwards! I haven't seen you in here before. Oh, nor are you. Hmm. Friend of yours? Uh, uh, Jack Walker. Ah, uh, butcher. Yeah. Indeed. Mind if I join you, boys? I assumed you would. Yes. Uh -huh. Bit of a fruitcase? I believe the word is cultured. Is that what they're calling it now? I don't know about you, Detective, but I would very much like to speak with Mrs. Davenport. And I think I know exactly where she possibly could be. With me, Detective. Oh, Watts. I thought I should inform you. I recalled a rumor, and it turns out to be true. A friend of yours, the butcher, he was uh, picked up by our station house a few years ago for suspicious homosexual behavior. I did not know that. No charges. I don't know the details, but not exactly the sort with whom one wants to be associated. Hmm? I will take that under advisement. Interesting developments. It appears Mr. Macaulay's paintings have only continued to increase in value. Apparently, the remarkable newspaper story and the news of the thefts have spurred desire even further. You learned that from the fruitcase? This is an 1890 Fime de Poilly, a very fine vintage. We're solving our first case. I don't want it. You don't like wine? I don't like your kind. 
What kind is that? A disgrace. <laughs> this isn't the last of it. If you're looking for your friend from last night, he's in the cells at Station House One. brought me in here last night let some of the others know who and what I was I'm going to get you out no just let me handle it you can't be implicated no. you already suspect me let him I'll tell anyone who will listen that you are immune to my advances you're a policeman well don't throw that away. Jack Walker is being held in custody in Station One cells. On what charge? Indecency. Well, I, uh, I don't know what I can do about it. He's a good man, Inspector. If he's guilty of what he's charged with, my hands are tied. Then charge me. What? I'm as indecent as Jack Walker. Charge me. You shouldn't have told me that. Well, I did. Bloody hell, was. Jack Walker should not be persecuted for being a human being, nor should I. So, Inspector, I leave it to you to do what you think is right. Are these seats free? I'm waiting for someone. Still. You can't save them all night. Police business. But you're drinking. Would you like to see a badge? There you are. Sir? Never mind. So, you're free to go after her? So it would seem. Cold feet? We have stolen evidence for our own names. Leaves me wondering if we are any better than she is. Well, I'll leave you to mull that over, Murdoch. I've got other things on my mind. Such as? Watts told me he's a left footer. You don't seem surprised. Look, it troubled me when I forced Detective Scott out of the constabulary. I don't want to do that again. Not so easy to be by the book. Don't get smart with me, Madam. It's just a statement, sir. And something it seems we are both wrestling with. If the higher-ups find out I did nothing about it, then I'll lose my job. Then you lose your job. What about your sister? Oh, we'll find a way to help her. Maybe you could become a bricklayer or something. A bricklayer? I'm not a bloody Italian. Well, then a plumber. They make more money than policemen do. But Thomas, I married you for the man that you are. A man who will do the right thing. Ross is a good man. He doesn't deserve this. Then fix it. Thank you, Margaret. Hard to believe, though, isn't it? <laughs> Detective Watts? Oh, Thomas. It was as clear as the nose on your face. Honestly, sometimes you are so dense. You had my prisoner released. I did. You're aware of what he is. A good butcher. You know you have another butcher working in this station house? You're new to your position as detective, aren't you? I am. Well, if you want to stay there, I'd advise that you leave this matter alone. I could have you out on your ear by the end of the day. You condone their behavior. It's their business, not ours. Close the door on your way out. And knock next time. Be safe. As safe as I'll ever be. Edwards has no proof on either Watts or Jack Walker. Mm. Well, that's good. I'd hate to give up our butcher. <laughs> oh, my king. <laughs>
A gift for a man of honor. My sincere, uh, my deepest respect. Hmm, good choice. <laughs> You're free on Friday evening. I believe so, yes. Good. Why? It's a surprise. Yes, I'm not fond of surprises. Indulge me. Well, as long as there's no hideous crime, I'll be there. If you would like, I could drop by later today. Uh, no, I don't do that. I'll see you on Friday. That'll be fine. We should have automobiles. So your witness to this abduction is the woman you believe held you captive. Correct. Now I can see why you're disinclined to trust her. But it's a baby. I mean, I have to look. No, I can carry on if you have uh, personal matters to attend to. No, no, no. Why would you say that? Uh, With me? Right. I've talked to every resident in the area. No one's reported anything. Certainly not a rat-like man with a new baby. All right. Well, I'll tell the lads to keep searching, but until we have a sighting, we don't have much to go on. Indeed. Uh, well, I should be off. George! Heffy! Have you heard anything? About what? It's the missing child. Dorothy's terribly upset. Beside herself, really. She's been searching all afternoon. Ah, has she? Yes. Well, if you, I'm not sure what else I can do. We have no reports of the missing child. We have no witnesses. She saw what she saw, George. Well, it's possible that she's mistaken. Mistaken? Look, I These think it's ridiculous admirable accusations that you want to, to give her the George. Now. All I'm saying is there's something suspicious about Miss Ernst. I find it hard to believe. Yes, I know you do. Me too. What are you doing here? I was going to ask you the same thing. Surprise! It was for tomorrow, but I suppose that's done. Uh, I'm sorry. I'll I let thought... you two sort this out. Thanks, out. Andrew. I'll have you know that I was the best baker in all of Toronto. I uh, let my imagination get away with me. Where are you going? Well, I thought... Sit down. Since you ruined the surprise, we may as well have cake. So I suppose this means you like me? Oh, very much. I should not have followed you. No, you shouldn't. But I am flattered. Never had anyone be jealous of me before. Mm. To a very good year. And more. Now, we're talking real pieces here, right? So we're going to want to start here to here. That's our ideal piece. In fact, I'd go as far as to pronounce Ms. Melita Ben's invention revolutionary. Revolutionary. A paper filter. Absolutely. My morning cup is vastly improved by the exclusion of spent coffee grinds. Perhaps I shall install a drip coffee maker in the shop uh, for the customers. Promotional gambit. Uh, a coffee break with your sirloin steak. Slake your thirst and buy liverwurst. This evening? Of course. When did this happen? Must have been last night. Jack, you should go home. Uh, but I can't. Go can. home. I'll deal with this. Uh, did any of you see who did this? Didn't. 
But it's a shame it should happen to such a fine, upstanding businessman. Detective Llewellyn Watts, is this by chance your work? Not work, really. More of a calling, I'd say. You painted the slander on the window? Slander? Where? Well, would you look at that? <laughs> the butcher's a fairy. I'm just doing my part to help, Detective. Mm -hmm. We can't let degenerates overrun this city. Mm-hmm. What's your name? Marcus Hinky. Just a law-abiding citizen. Marcus Hinky, I'm placing you under arrest for vandalism. Oh, come on now. Do you not want me here? Sorry, I just feel like everyone is watching me. Well, I've got news that should ease your mind. I've arrested the vandal. He did what? He even confessed. Rather proudly, I might add. What, what did you charge him with? Well, destruction of property and... No, no, I mean, I... I just wanted to make this go away. I didn't want an arrest or a trial or... Justice to be served? It won't be justice. It'll be every bigot in the city gossiping about the fairy butcher. It will kill my business. But... It will ruin me. Please. And how long do you think you'll last at the constabulary when the rumors start flying about the sodomite cop? Jack. That's what they call us, you know? You saw it. Splashed across my shop in blood-red letters. I'm sorry. I just wanted to make this... Go away. I can fix this. I wish you could. I can. I'll get the charges dropped. And then what? What do you mean? How will you fix... this? This will always be against the laws that you vowed to enforce. Maybe not always. There's no way in the world that this will end happily. So we should at least end it quickly. No, Jack. You're right. I should not have arrested that man. It was rash and ill-considered, and I will Learn. never again... I... This is too dangerous. For both of us. I'm sorry, but... It's over. Nice to see you. Yes, of course. Ah, oh, what? Quick work on nabbing that vandal. At least one of my detectives is earning his pay. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, about that. I know this is unusual, but I must implore you to drop the charges. Drop the charges? I don't get you, Watts. I thought Jack Walker was your friend. He is, and my friend wishes to avoid a public trial. Oh, I see. Are you sure about this? Yes. Very well, then. I'll release the man. Perhaps it's for the best. <laughs> Before you say anything, I got the charges against Marcus Hinky dropped, as you requested. Thank you. Unfortunately, now is not a good time. Please, Jack, just talk Jack, to me. Jack, who's that? Invite your friend in. The more the merrier. Hmm. Uh... What's the occasion? Engagement party. I'm going to make an honest man of Jack. <laughs> an honest man, huh? Well, I'm, I'm sorry, but this is a... Uh, Don't dawdle in the doorway. Come in and have a drink. Oh, yes, join us. Hmm? Thank you, miss, but I'm here on police business. I never intrude on your joy. Oh, that
fuss about dropping the charges. You got what you wanted, and you're still skulking around with your face tripping No, you. I didn't get what I wanted. I... I'm sorry. I received news of an engagement. And who are the happy couple? A Miss Clara Cartwright and a Mr. Jack Walker. <clears throat> oh. Do you know what exasperates me most about this engagement? I'm not inclined to speculate. That poor woman will be stuck in a sham marriage to a man who is too frightened to live honestly. Who are we to judge? People get married for all sorts of reasons. I have to warn Miss Cartwright. About what, Watts? Maybe this is what Jack Walker needs to do. And maybe you should follow his example and find yourself a nice young lady. Well, I, for one, am not prepared to live a lie. Nor should he. Don't do anything stupid, Watts. Private detective report. She hired a snoop to find out how bad it was. Number one reason to never get married. Gambling? Gambling, divorce, precipitous health decline. Nothing wipes out one's savings faster than a bad marriage. Were you not yourself considering marriage a short while back? <sighs> Case in point. He turned out to be a murderer. If we were married, the League of Bulls would have ruined me. Ah, uh -huh. so no marriage for you then. Consider me a confirmed bachelorette. Well, consider me your counterpart. You're a confirmed bachelor? Uh... You seem surprised. Ooh. You just haven't been in love. No, you're very wrong about that. What was her name? Jack. Lynn. <clears throat> well, if you were so in love with Jacqueline, why didn't you marry her? Because someone else will be assuming that honor shortly. Oh. Sorry. Yes, me too. Uh, I can't go down this street. Why? It's the shortest route to the police Can station. please go a different way? Uh, there's a police call box one street over. <sighs> Fine. Jurors openly wept at the anguish Mr. Fellows expressed over the duplicity of the woman he loved for whom he intended to sacrifice himself. Well, it's all your fault, Miss Cherry. My fault? It was you who found the body. I believe that's a burden we both share, Detective Watts. No regrets? No. We acted with integrity at every point. Oh, you always do. That's not a common opinion. Oh, I don't have common opinions. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, it's my fault I um, misread your intentions. No, I'm just not uh, ready. I'm still... In love with her, yes. Something like that? Oh. Uh, Apologies. Doctor, there's something I was hoping to speak with you about. Yes. 
Are you familiar with the work of a Dr. von Schrank nutzing Well, the psychiatrist, yes. He works with hypnosis, does he not? Hypnosis and deviant sexual impulses, yes. Uh, he boasts a perfect success rate with his patients. Well, that seems suspect, considering what he claims to cure. Perhaps it is, nonetheless. Are you asking something from me? You have experience working with hypnosis, do you not? Well, some. Then I would like you to treat me. <sighs> you are aware of my... Yes, I'm aware. Then you understand what I'm asking. Well, I do, but... Please, I... please, just consider it. I need your help. Julia, what is it? What? Nothing. If it truly is nothing, then will you please stop the pacing? I have a patient. Well, a prospective patient. He's asked me to perform a treatment I'm not convinced will work. What is it? Hypnosis. Oh. You have some experience with hypnosis. It has proven to be effective. For certain things. He's asking me to cure him of something unconventional. His homosexuality. Oh. The only doctor with any record of treatment is highly suspect. He boasts a 100% success rate with 45 sessions and a, a trip to a brothel. Could this treatment be harmful? No. Hypnosis either works or it doesn't. Side effects are quite rare. So you aren't concerned with the effectiveness of the treatment? No. I'm concerned that the condition shouldn't be treated at all. Some people are given a tremendous burden to carry in this lifetime. Through no fault of their own. Who are we to tell them that they shouldn't try to change their circumstances? Llewellyn? Llewellyn? Are you all right? How do you feel? Do you want to continue? I, uh, this is... the same. It's... I don't feel any different. I don't believe the hypnosis will work for you. What? I felt a great deal of resistance during the process. I don't think you truly want to change. No, no, I do. I have to. But perhaps this isn't a choice. You just have to accept it. Try to find a way to live alongside it. I tried that. I pushed it aside for weeks. But I can't endure this anymore. Changing yourself isn't going to take away that pain. It will stop it from happening again. My heart isn't broken because someone doesn't love me anymore. It's broken because someone isn't allowed to love me. But he does love you. I don't want to give that up. That's the only thing I want. I don't want to be like this. I don't expect you to understand. If, if you want to, we can try another session. I'll catch up with you later. With Ruth, I think coming to your senses is a relative term. <laughs> I saw the announcement about the wedding in the newspaper. But he's a friend, George. I'm happy for him. I'll cover Simcoe. Thanks for coming.
Not sure why. What did you want to say? Lou Helen, please listen. I. Uh, All right. I'm leaving her. I was scared of being with you and what that means. So I said I would marry Clara. She's with child? By a man who left her. What difference is that? You agreed to be the father. I can't go through with it. Let's go away together to, 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 to France or, or Greece. We could have a happy life there. Happy? Give up on our lives here? Break that young woman's heart? You made a promise to her, Jack. But it would be a lie. Yes, a lie you've already told. You did the wrong thing with me. Do the right thing by her. Now let me get on with my life. One last drink. No, no. Hey. Oh, Miss Hart, I wonder if you could secure me a table at your husband's restaurant. Of course. You seem in good spirits today. Well, I suppose I've come to terms with something that has cast a pall over these last weeks. Your heartbreak. Uh, you've heard. You and I both. Has the glow of your recent nuptials dimmed? That's a kind way of stating it. You may be able to procure an annulment. I can't. I have everything I want. And even in this short time, I've become dependent on it. Oof. I do not envy your situation, Miss Hart. I recently identified the one problem with love. Hmm. And that is? Love requires vulnerability. A relationship, by its very nature, demands dependency. But that means your emotions, your happiness, your very identity are in the hands of someone else. And the solution? Self-reliance. If you aren't dependent on anyone, you can't be hurt. Correct. I no longer look for love or companionship. Instead, I seek joy in myself. And I must say, I do enjoy the company. I love her. I mean, I've loved others, but Effie and I... It made no sense at all, and at the same time, made all the sense in the world. It maddens me that she doesn't know that. Then you need to find a way to tell her, George. Some things are worth fighting for. Right to the end. It seems the inspector stepped in it again. You'll uh, have the rest of the day to gather your belongings and say your goodbyes. But first, I'll need you to hand over your badge. All right. Inspector? This doesn't concern you, Detective. You'll be briefed later. Chief Constable, are you relieving our inspector of his badge? I am. Well, then you'll be taking mine as well. Uh, yes, and mine. One, two, sir. With you. Oh, uh, um, Llewellyn, what are you doing here? I Dropping off your know, wedding gift? You came all the way here to drop off a wedding gift. Not far. For a wedding I told you I didn't want to go through with. Just here with a gift. I don't believe you. I should go. You're getting married tomorrow. All the more reason you should stay. Clara, I'm... Get dressed and get out. I'm, I'm so sorry, Clara. Oh, God, I, I'm so sorry. I, I, I don't know what to say. Get out. You deserve to be with someone who will love and cherish you. I am marrying you. I said get out! I am with child, and I will have a husband. 
And after we're married, you can engage in whatever filth you like. 